I'm coming very rapidly to the end of my first job as an FY2, a foundation year two doctor, and it's easily been my favorite rotation thus far. For those of you that don't know, for the last four months, so since we all rotated in August, as we do every year, I've been working in the neurology department, which is the field of medicine that's concerned with the nervous system, chiefly therefore problems of the brain and the spinal cord. It's actually been really different for a number of reasons from all of the previous rotations that I've worked on. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you a bit about why it's been so good, why it's been different, all of the things that I'll hopefully take forward. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know, my name is Ollie. I'm a junior doctor living and working in England, working as part of the NHS. And if you are new to the channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. It really helps me out and helps keep all of the content free. So the first and perhaps most obvious difference to talk about is that I'm more senior than I was before. I've actually moved up a grade. This is my first job working as an FY2, foundation year two, uh, or a senior house officer doctor. These two terms are functionally interchangeable and I've, I've talked fairly recently about all of the different titles that doctors use and what the different grades mean. But the only really key thing that you need to understand for this video is that there is a difference between a foundation year one doctor, that's a doctor who is potentially fresh out of medical school, not worked in the NHS before, and then a so-called senior house officer or an FY2, where you are more senior than that newly qualified doctor, but less senior than a registrar, someone who is already in specialty training. So whereas that F1 doctor will obviously often need a lot more close support, a lot more guidance, and they're working out how to do, everything that they need to do in the day-to-day -day job. An SHO is expected to be a little bit more functionally independent, not completely independent, obviously you're still relatively very junior, but it's kind of more expected that if you were to give a job to the ward SHO that they'd generally be able to get on with it and report back when it's done. So let that just frame the rest of this video. I'm now a little bit more independent, a more senior grade of doctor than I was before, but still very junior in the overall totem pole. And the department that I work in actually has no FY1s, no brand new junior doctors. It's only SHO and above. I don't know exactly why that is. Uh, for example, I assume someone must have made the decision in the past not to have brand new doctors on the unit, but to me it does make sense. A lot of the patients, because we're a specialist centre, are very complicated. They have more care needs, I would say, than the average medical patient. And you wouldn't necessarily have a lot of the skills that you need on the unit fresh out of medical school. So on our SHO rotor, we have a mix of foundation year two doctors like me, so the same grade as me, two years into their medical career, and what are called internal medicine trainees or IMT doctors. So these are doctors who are more senior than me, who have committed and dedicated themselves to training in internal medicine rather than surgery, but they're not yet registrars. So they are still building generalist experience and are moving slowly towards the stage where they will be applying for their own careers in you know cardiology respiratory medicine geriatrics whatever it is they want to do and they've been absolutely wonderful to learn from and to be looked after by because they are close enough to me in terms of my knowledge skills and experience to to kind of understand where i'm at and what i need but they're also sufficiently senior to me that they are able to give me kind of good pastoral and educational advice to teach me uh, when i need teaching and to be a more experienced eye if i'm doubting myself or i need a second opinion or just a bit more knowledge on something. Now onto the specifics of my actual jobs. It's much more daytime work. We work 8.30 a.m. till 5 p.m. with no nights and about one in five weekends. So our patients overnight are covered by the general medicine team and we'll maybe do one in four, one in five weeks on call. So that's where you're on call from 8.30 a.m. until 9 p.m. And what's also been a bit more unique about this job is that we only cover our own patients in hours so whereas before when i've worked on general surgery or general medicine you're kind of put wherever you need to be put so one day you might be on cardiology one day you might be on respiratory one week you might be on infectious diseases or something and then carted off to somewhere else for the on-call shift covering several wards while i've been working on this job i've only looked after neurology patients which is obviously a really good thing for actually getting to know your patients and giving a sense of continuity of care. 
And that continuity is actually really important because I would describe the structure of this job as being much more similar to something called the firm, which is a term that isn't used much nowadays in medical training, but it essentially describes a continuous team that you would work as part of as a junior doctor. And it was kind of a team apprenticeship model. You'd be working with the same junior doctors, the same registrars, the same consultants, bosses, for a protracted period of time. And the way this works for us is that we have a given consultant and the same one or two registrars for a full week at a time while that consultant does their week on call. So for the full seven day period, you are part of a consistent, unchanging group of people. It's certainly a more old fashioned feeling department in many ways. And that combined with the sort of tacit, no scrubs rule, you're kind of expected to be in professional wear every day, like business casual effectively. And that brings me nicely onto the next talking point, which is that it's a very professional feeling department. A hands up, very hierarchical, I think, as many NHS departments are, but one that is built on quite a strict sense of respect. I've unfortunately worked jobs in the past where you are basically just a name on a rotor. You are a, an occupant in an Excel spreadsheet. You are a nameless junior whose job is to turn up, fill the rotor, hopefully not kill anyone while you're there and then go home and come back the next day. During these last four months, I've felt that I've been treated a lot more like a colleague and more often than I kind of expected, like my opinion actually has some value and a, and a really small but something I've really paid a lot of attention to and noticed is that just as the registrars and consultants obviously expect to be referred to as Dr. Smith, Dr. Jones, Dr. Whatever, and to be introduced to patients thereby, which is obviously a fairly normal situation, just as they expect that from you, found that my senior colleagues will always refer to me as Dr. Burton when dealing with patients and their families. And I think I'd really underappreciated quite how affirming that is, just in terms of thinking about how junior doctors like me develop their professional identity and again, feeling like their training, like their thoughts and feelings, like their opinions have value in a given clinical situation. I think I'd underestimated how important that was. And it's certainly something that I now do as a result of this rotation with all of my medical colleagues, regardless of their grade and something that I will always do moving forward. But the really, really major important thing for me that has made this job so enjoyable, and again, I need to emphasize that this is a really personal opinion and your experience may vary depending on how you feel about the culture. But despite it being hard work, complex and challenging, there is a really, really strong training culture. The job is designed to a degree from the ground up to actively support the training of the junior doctor that occupies that slot on the rotor. So rather than just filling the slot on the rotor, turning up and doing essentially administration, you are actively supported to get as much learning as you can from any given situation. Even a small but simple thing being that you are actively supported and promoted to go to clinic. Where I work is a specialist center and there are lots of presentations that you simply wouldn't see at other centers. And given that we only realistically need a fairly small number of doctors to run the ward at any given time, whenever we have more doctors than that, you know, you get the registrars, the consultants saying, well, you know, there's enough of you here, so who's going to come to clinic? Or there is this clinic on or this procedure happening, you should go and do that. Again, not something I've ever experienced before, but something that actually makes you feel valued. The second thing for me was procedures, not just the expectation that we will be trained in how to do procedures, but that we will be the ones performing them once we have been trained. The key one that we do is lumbar punctures, where a small needle is inserted between the bones of the vertebral column, the spine, um, introduced into the subarachnoid space, the space that is continuous with the inside of the brain and the spinal cord. And we take out a sample of that fluid, cerebrospinal fluid or CSF. It's a really satisfying and often quite challenging procedure, both from a technical standpoint and the communication aspect, which I really enjoy. It's an invasive, potentially painful procedure with full safety checklists and consent and that conversation that you have to have about what's going to happen. I've really enjoyed that aspect of the job. It's now a procedure that I'm certified and trained to perform independently, and I can take that to other departments and other roles when I move on and go and work elsewhere and try and ascend in my training. 
And just to share this with you all, because it was a really nice and affirming moment for me, is that I had a patient who'd had a bad experience with lumbar punctures before, um, but we were able to take things really slowly, talk them through it, and um, it went so well that I ended up with a, a lovely card and a small um, gift, thankfully providing a positive and tolerable experience for them. And that was just a really nice kind of major win. You don't get that many moments like that um, working in the NHS just because of how everything is at the moment, but that was a, a really clear kind of crystalline, yes, I did this thing and it went very well and the patient had a really good experience, good enough to go out of their way and then come back and give that positive feedback. So that was a huge pleasure and a privilege to be able to do that and a really kind of standout moment even in my my short career <laughs> thus far and needless to say that there are lots of other procedures that happen on the unit as well we work quite closely with the neurosurgical team um, at my current hospital because of the interplay between a lot of the conditions that we look after and being essentially the only doctor on the team that is interested in neurosurgery again everyone's been very keen if there are procedures or operations going out on our patients if the ward's not too busy saying you know ollie go go to theater see this procedure be involved learn come back and tell us about it again just that feeling that other people are trying to promote your learning and are engaged in your learning and looking out for you. That's really, really important. And then lastly, the other thing that's happened on this unit that hasn't happened elsewhere is something called a grand round. And this is essentially a once weekly gathering of all of the neurology staff working in all of the different departments. So not just our more ward based unit, but the research units, our neurophysiology unit, and it's everyone from the junior doctors like me to the registrars, to the consultants, to the professors, everyone gathers in a lecture theater and essentially a couple of clinical cases are presented that are interesting or have a good learning point behind them and they're talked through from beginning to end and the doctors are basically quizzed and grilled on what do you think's going on what would be the next step that you would do what do you think the diagnosis might be or can't be depending on the information that you have if you've ever done something like problem-based or case-based learning in medical school or you've read about that if you're thinking about going to medical school it's a bit like that except on a much larger scale and that's great because you get to see how more senior clinicians than you think about problems you see their their kind of top-down approach to problem solving with a lot more knowledge and experience than you have it's just very eye-opening hearing them go through their process and you can obviously think oh i hadn't thought about that or i would have done something differently or i've never even heard of this condition that they've got multiple years of experience dealing with so again it just highlights that they're kind of operating on a a completely different level to a junior trainee like me. And this is all then followed by a lecture, like a keynote talk on something that is topical or pertinent. The last one we had was all about the radar trials, which is to do with wearable devices for monitoring people with epilepsy. But yes, that's a summary of the job that I've been doing for the last four months. There's been kind of other things going on in the background. I did my taste a week in neurosurgery. There's some research that's finished up. I'm now a couple of days away from rotating onto my next academic medicine rotation as part of the academic foundation program i will be talking about that soon but this video is already way too long so thank you very much for watching if you've got any questions let me know down below this is just a kind of diary vlog whatever you like capturing the experience as it goes on so thanks very much for watching take care and i'll see you next time Bye bye